What is OCNDS? OCNDS stands for Ochre Chung Neurodevelopmental Syndrome. The condition gets its name from the scientist who discovered it in 2016, Dr. Volkan Ochre and Dr. Wendy Chung. It is estimated that one in every 100,000 births results in OCNDS. OCNDS affects people globally and affects people equally regardless of sex or race or ethnicity. So what are some of the symptoms of OCNDS? OCNDS can affect many parts of the body, including the brain, muscles, the GI system, the face, eyes, mouth, heart, and other body systems. These symptoms are shown here. Let's break it down by looking at each part of the body. Let's start with the brain. Almost everyone with OCNDS has some level of speech delay, and some individuals do not have the ability to speak. Some may use an iPad or similar assistive communication device. Individuals with OCNDS may also have developmental delay, so they may be slower to meet developmental milestones like walking. 75% of individuals have mild to moderate intellectual disability. This means that they may learn more slowly or a bit differently. They may need help in school and may need a special program called an Individualized Education Program, or IEP. People with OCNDS may have autism or behavioral differences like hand flapping or they may get upset easily. Sometimes this leads to self-injurious or destructive behavior. 25% of individuals with OCNDS have seizures, and some may have differences in the structure of the brain that can be seen on a brain MRI. Let's move on to the gastrointestinal system. Individuals with OCNDS may have difficulty feeding or they may have other GI issues like constipation, diarrhea, and reflux, which can cause heartburn. Some individuals may need a feeding tube to make sure that they're growing and gaining weight since they can often have poor weight gain. OCNDS can also affect the skeleton and the muscles. Many people with OCNDS may have generalized hypotonia starting in infancy. This means that the child may have low muscle tone or floppiness. Hypotonia can also affect internal systems and can contribute to other symptoms like constipation. Individuals with OCNDS may have short stature, meaning that they may be shorter than the average person. They may also have flexible joints or a curvature in the spine called scoliosis. Some other possible symptoms include trouble sleeping. They may be prone to minor infections like ear or lung infections, or they may have vision problems. They can sometimes have slight differences in the face that can make people with OCNDS look similar to each other, like a smaller head, a round face, and a short and wide nose. They may also have misaligned teeth or cavities, or some have congenital heart defects, which are differences in the structure of the brain that are present at birth. OCNDS affects everyone differently. Symptoms can range from mild to severe, and just because someone has OCNDS, it doesn't mean that they will have all these symptoms. OCNDS is so rare that many doctors don't know about it. We have a page on the Foundation website where families can nominate doctors that they've had good experiences with. You can find doctors that see OCNDS patients at the link listed or scan the QR code on the screen. Now that we've learned a bit about what OCNDS might look like, what causes OCNDS? OCNDS is caused by a change in one of our genes. And genes are like our set of instructions. They tell us how to make the proteins in our body and proteins are what help us as humans to live and grow. Because our genes play such an important role in the body, changes to our genes can result in proteins that might not work properly, and this can lead to different health symptoms. How does this work in OCNDS? The gene involved in OCNDS is called CSNK2A1, and it's located on chromosome 20. Changes in this gene, which are called variants or mutations, can result in OCNDS. Children inherit one chromosome from each of their parents. So how do changes in the CSNK2A1 gene actually happen, and how are they inherited? Some cases are non-inherited, meaning that the child did not inherit the condition from a parent, while some children inherited the condition from a parent. Most individuals with OCNDS have a new genetic change, meaning that the genetic variant or mutation was not inherited from either of their parents. We call these changes in our genes de novo because the condition arises new in the child and is not present in either parent. The diagram to the left of the screen shows males as squares and females as circles, and parents and their child are connected by horizontal and vertical lines. The shaded green square means that the individual is affected with OCNDS. 
So we see that this couple had a boy represented by the shaded green square, and he is affected with OCNDS. The star on one of his chromosomes shows his genetic variant or mutation on chromosome 20, and we see that neither of his parents had this variant. So how do these variants happen, and how likely is it to happen again in another pregnancy? This typically happens when there are random changes in the CSNK2A1 gene early on in the embryonic development of the baby, either in the egg or the sperm or when the baby's embryo was forming. And because these are random events, the chance that another pregnancy will be affected with OCNDS is low, at about 1%. There have also been a few observed families with inherited OCNDS. This means that one of the parents had a genetic change in the CSNK2A1 gene and passed it on to their child. Here in the figure, the variant in the child was inherited from his mother. And oftentimes, the severity of symptoms can differ even among two individuals with OCNDS in the same family. So how likely is a couple to have another affected child in this case? If a parent has a CSNK2A1 gene mutation, they have a 50% chance of passing it on to another child. This means that there is also a 50% chance of not passing on the mutation to a child. The diagram to the right shows an affected parent who did not pass on their variant. It's important to know that this 50% chance of passing on the mutation does not mean that 50% or half of a given couple's children will be affected with OCNDS. One helpful way we can think about this is to compare the random chance of inheriting or not inheriting the mutation is to think of a coin flip where there's a 50% chance of landing on heads and a 50% chance of landing on tails with each toss. So you might flip a coin four times and they are all heads. They might be all tails or there could be any number in between. Likewise, if a couple has four children, this does not mean that exactly half of their children or two in this case will be affected. They may by chance have four affected children, none affected or any number in between. We've talked a bit about how genes help make our proteins and how variants in our genes can occur. So what protein does the CSNK2A1 gene tell us to make? This protein is called CK2, and CK2 is a type of kinase. The CK2 protein is present in every cell of our bodies. In patients with OCNDS, this protein is altered and can't function properly. We can broadly think of kinases like the controllers of light switches. CK2 protein is always on or working, and it helps turn different proteins in our body on or off. The CK2 protein turns on a lot of different proteins that are important in our development. Back when we were just an embryo developing in the womb, CK2 was helping things like our brain, muscles, and bones develop and grow. So learning what the CSNK2A1 gene and its protein do helped the symptoms of OCNDS make a little bit more sense. When the CSNK2A1 gene isn't working properly, we might see differences in the way our brain, muscles, and bones develop. And as we've reviewed, individuals with OCNDS may be slower to learn, they may have low muscle tone or shorter bones. Those living with OCNDS can have many daily challenges, such as swallowing, toileting, dressing, putting on a seatbelt, and making friends. Their days often consist of different types of interventions, including speech therapy, occupational therapy, feeding therapy, and physical therapy. Parents and caregivers of individuals with OCNDS have assumed roles they never imagined. They are advocates, nurses, champions, therapists, fundraisers, researchers, trailblazers, teachers, and paperwork experts. For more family and caregiver resources, you can visit the following website listed on the screen for an OCNDS FAQ. You can also find some additional resources under the tab that says For Families on the Foundation website. Thanks so much for watching.